Hey guys, my name's Clinton Jones, I am the Punisher, and I am very excited to talk about my favorite subject, surface imperfections. You guys are gonna learn what they are, where to find them, and how to actually make your own from materials around the house, and how to make your own CG assets. I'm super excited for this. We're gonna take those assets, and we're gonna apply them to our renders to bring them to life. Surface imperfections take on many shapes and forms. They're the worn edges on metal railings, the fingerprints on your smartphone, or the dirt layer that builds up over your porch railing. They can be the scratches in your hardwood floor, the white marks on a clean window, or dried water spots scattered across your shower glass. Surface imperfections tell us a story of where something's been and how that something has been used. They're all around us, and as artists, we need to be very aware of those imperfections and the important role they play in making our renders look real. Without the scratches, this CG doorknob would just look too plain. Or worse, it would just look CG. The grungy texture on this keypad really adds to the realism of the metal and it tells us how this phone booth was used. And the fingerprints and scratches on this film camera really take it to the next level. And they're not just useful in close-ups. If I didn't add surface imperfections to the Boss Town Dynamics robots, they just wouldn't look good. They wouldn't look real. These things have been tossed around. They would have scratches. They would have grime and dirt on these things. So now that you guys know how important it is to add these imperfections to your renders, it's time to get a hold of some. Now it's very easy to go online and look up surface imperfections. Like for example, this pack of 30 4K 16-bit seamless surface imperfections that I put together just for this video. The link is in the description. But I promise you it is way more fun to make them yourself. Get your hands dirty. I wanna show you guys what I learned along the way. So let's start with the three basics. All right, so fingerprints. All I'm doing here is using an ink pad to transfer my identity to a white piece of poster board. If you're making multiple textures, be sure to add a bunch of variation to the amount of fingerprints. Consider adding smears or entire handprints to the mix. Just experiment and have fun with this. For scratches, I'm taking a wire brush and randomly pulling it apart, dipping that in a black water-soluble paint and very lightly brushing this poster board, making sure to keep my movement random. And be sure not to go too heavy on these, you know? I find that the more subtle the effect, the better. You can always make like a really heavy, super scratched version. You're here, you got your stuff set. And for dust, I'm using flour on black poster board. Lightly sprinkle it over your canvas for an untampered look or wipe it any number of ways for infinite variation. So with this pack, I really tried my best to make imperfections that I couldn't make with just CG noise. I wanted it to be more unique and that gave me this idea. Here I'm using gray paint on my shoes to lay down a base layer on a larger piece of white poster board. Once I'm happy with the shoe variation and the surface area covered, I'll switch to black paint. This will give the imperfection depth when we process it in Photoshop. And remember, do a few different versions, all right? We didn't set all this stuff up for nothing. And what we're really going for when creating these imperfections is contrast. You want black on white, you want white and gray on black. You wanna be able to set yourself up so that you can process it in Photoshop pretty simply. Now that brings me to the more advanced surface imperfections, specifically smudges. So getting contrast out of screen smudges can be a bit tricky, but certainly not impossible. So here's what I did. First, track down a laptop screen, a tablet screen, or your phone screen could even work, and lay it on the ground next to a bright light source. The brighter, the better. Get your camera on a tripod and shoot straight down. You should be able to see some smudges if you placed any on your screen at this point. Now, if not, the trick here is to angle the light to catch the smudges from our bird's eye view. Just play with the angle on the screen or the amount of smudges if you're not seeing any. Reflections in your screen can make extracting these smudges a lot more difficult. So what you can do is put a black towel behind your camera, or what I was doing was actually using duvetine to block the reflections. So that's most of the hard part. All right, now for the fun stuff. Let's just smudge up the screen as much as you can. Go for variation here. Use the tablet like you actually would. Same for the smartphone, you know? So I found that breathing hot air into my hands made it easier to lay smudges down on the screen, or honestly, just run your hands through your hair for a little bit of grease and, you know, have fun with it. It's a good time. So this next step is pretty crucial. What you wanna do is wipe the screen clean uh, without moving the iPad or the laptop or your phone. The point here is we're gonna use a clean plate to extract the smudges later in Photoshop. So now you just rinse and repeat. 
So you can use the same setup to capture dust and fibers that you might find on the surface of, you know, items that don't get cleaned too often. So grab some old clothes, give them a shake, and let it just rain down on top of your screen. So then you just wipe your screen clean, capture your clean plate, and move on. So the last method for capturing imperfections is to just do it natty. Meaning, you just grab a camera and you find some imperfections out in the world and you take a picture of it, you bring it in Photoshop and you process it. So this is the way I'm capturing water spots, white marks, leakage, any kind of like water-based or grunge-based effects. So I found these on my shower glass. They really show up in the morning when the sunlight blasts through or during the day when the ambient light fills the bathroom. Time of day is very important. You just gotta keep your eyes open. Now the same is true for white marks and splatter on this window. The sun cut through in the morning revealing these beautiful CG assets. And I found some leaky dirt buildup on a sketchy white van parked out front. I grabbed my camera, cranked up my shutter speed, took a shot, and got it out of there real quick. So before we hop into Photoshop, let me just talk about camera settings really quick. First off, grab the camera with the highest megapixels you possibly can. We want to eliminate as much blur as possible. So that means if you're shooting handheld, crank your shutter speed so that you eliminate any motion blur. If you're shooting on a tripod, your shutter speed can be lowered as low as you want, but make sure you set it to a countdown timer. Give it like five seconds until it takes the picture. We don't want any depth of field either. So make sure your aperture is like 5.6 or higher and you're shooting straight on to your wall and shoot in raw. Use those 16 bits. It's what will set your imperfections above the rest. All right, enough yapping. Let's hop into Photoshop. I want to talk to you guys about how to process these things and how to make them seamless. Let's go. All right, so let's start with this uh, clean plate business here. If you guys shot raw, which hopefully you did, you'll be prompted with Adobe Camera Raw. Let's go ahead and select both photos. I'm going to hold down shift to do that. We're going to make sure that it's in Adobe Neutral for that profile. Uh, browse, Adobe Raw, Adobe Neutral. And that way we actually maintain all the color tones and values. You're not getting any color correction on top of it. We'll scroll down and we'll make sure that there's uh, no vignetting in our image. So we can actually bring this slider up to make sure and correct for that. You can bring the midpoint in if you want to. And we'll just go ahead and open these guys up. So this is actually one of the best ways I've seen clean plates extracted here. So I gotta give a shout out to Mr. Rob Blight who showed me how to do this. The technique works wonders, so big thanks. So let's drag a clean plate into the smudge plate and you can see that the angle, you know, perfectly matches, didn't really move. It moves a little bit, but you know, that's, that's okay. All you need to do is select the clean plate layer, scroll down to subtract and voila. Let's add a black and white adjustment layer because these imperfections work on a black to white scale. And let's go for a square crop and choose the area that we like the best. So from here, we need to make this texture seamless. If we were to tile this right now, you'd see the edges on all sides. The best way to do this, I've found, is to group it with Control G, duplicate it with Control J, and then merge it with Control E. So we're working with just one image, but we still have our backup here. And we need to find out the image resolution. So we'll go to image, image size, and you'll see 4344 is our number. And with that, we'll go filter, other, offset. And this basically flips our image inside out. We'll type in half the resolution of our image and that'll perfectly split it right down the middle like this. Now from this point, we're gonna use the clone stamp tool to basically patch up these seams here. So S for the clone stamp tool, and I'm gonna use the open and close brackets to increase or decrease the size of my brush. And we'll go with a low opacity brush here. So the trick here is to make these smudges look like they actually continue, as opposed to chopping off at some random point. So you wanna be smart with the way you fill this stuff in. You also don't want one pattern super close to the original source. You can obviously tell that it's tiled this way. Another trick I like to implement is making a levels adjustment layer and cranking the gamma so that I can actually see a little bit better. It's like turning the lights on. So with this, I'm pretty happy. So you can hit Control Alt F to redo the previous effect. And this brings us back to our original state. Let's go ahead and hit Control T, move it over to the side and hold Alt and we'll test out if it's seamless or not. And this looks solid to me. This way we're actually able to tile this texture as many times as we want. We'll never see any seams and our renders will go on forever and ever. 
So the quickest way to get these imperfections working in your renders is to actually pipe them into the roughness channel here in your material. And you can see immediately you're getting some really, really nice results. We can go ahead and scale this thing down. And you can actually lower the gamma here to get more of a intense version of that texture, which I always like to do. And you can always add a gradient and you can crunch these up you know get that black point down a little bit more uh, whatever look you're really going for you can totally mess with this inside of your program of choice so real quick before we wrap things up let's go back into Photoshop and talk about how to process images that don't have the clean plate attached so let's use these water spots as an example let's go ahead and grab a square crop there's clearly a bright spot up here and it gets darker down towards the bottom left and we want to even this out. So I want to show you guys a really cool trick that I use to fix this. So first things first, we're going to do a levels adjustment and I'm going to bring the black slider up to the point where the levels really start. You can see the histogram here. The white levels look like they actually start where our slider is placed. So by bringing this bottom slider up, it's getting these black levels here, the darkest of darks. Um, but what about the rest of this stuff? We need to bring this gray down to a black as well. So here's what I do. I make another levels adjustment and I'm gonna go ahead and bring the gamma slider down and then I'll bring the black slider down just a little bit so that this mid area is also crunched down to just about the level we need it. We don't wanna go too much and lose data. We wanna bring it just to the point where it turns black. But you notice that down here, it's too crunched. So what do we do? Well, luckily, since we're using adjustment layers and we're not baking in these levels adjustments, we can actually paint on to this white card here with a black paintbrush to undo the effect. It's actually really cool and it's the best way to work in Photoshop. So I'm gonna use the open close brackets to um, make my brush size smaller or larger, switch to black, make sure you have this white card selected. And now you'll notice if I paint on here, it's undoing the levels effect like it was never there. So if we know that, if we go with a very soft, low opacity brush, we can slowly erase the areas where we don't need it to be as dark and don't need it to be as crushed. Now from here, we definitely have some spots that are too bright. So I'll make another levels adjustment, bring it below the gamma shift, which is there just for us to see things a bit better. And we'll bring down the gamma on that. Now obviously we don't want to darken this stuff up so now this is actually when you can use the gradient tool. We can go from black to white from one side of the image to the other and you can see how it turns it on on one side and off on the other. Another trick is to hit Control i to invert the entire adjustment layer to turn the whole thing off and then you just paint on the parts that you want to turn on. You can go filter, other, offset and this is a point where you can actually see oh do we need to keep making tweaks or is this enough to work with and i think this is actually pretty fine because this is these three quadrants actually look not bad and make sure to maintain these 16 bits by saving out your image as a tiff file now it doesn't matter what program you use i know a lot of you guys use blender i myself use cinema 4d but it's all about how you use the tools you have to create the art that you're seeing in your head. So shout outs to these very talented CG artists who put together some awesome art with these imperfections we just created together. Guys, so have fun, get out there and make some surface imperfections. It's a total blast. But if you guys would rather just buy a pack online, I'm actually running a 50% off deal on my imperfection pack until Christmas only. It is a very high quality pack that I'm very, very proud of. And it's 34K 16 bit images that'll help you guys take your CG renders to the next level. The link is in the description. If you guys learned something new, then consider subscribing. Also leave a comment down below with what you would like to learn next. I really enjoy putting these videos together. Happy holidays to y'all. I hope 2021 is gonna be a better time. I'm sure it will be. And I'll see you guys then. Have a good one. Peace.